Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi, a film that divided the Star Wars fandom. I remember when I saw it for the first time in theaters and I walked out and that was the first time that I'd ever walked out of a movie theater and I felt like I just didn't, I didn't like the movie. You know, usually I walk out of a movie theater and I feel like that was the greatest thing ever. You know, I feel like I was taken to a world I've never seen before. Everything is brand new, but The Last Jedi just kind of broke me and I didn't like it. And I've been infamous on this channel for saying that it is one of the worst Star Wars movies in the entire trilogy. But one day last year, um, I don't know. It's like I had a religious awakening or something. I, I came to the realization that I was wrong. The Last Jedi is not a bad movie. You know, I, I, I realized that it wasn't a bad movie before. And then I, I, I remember I made a video on the channel and I was like, oh, you know, it's a good movie, but it's not a good Star Wars movie. But, you know, I came to the realization The Last Jedi is a good Star Wars movie. It's a good film. It's a good Star Wars film. It's, uh, I wouldn't go so far as to say top five, but it's a really good movie. And I just want to talk about The Last Jedi and try to convince any of the Last Jedi non-believers that it is it is a good film because i used to be one of you I, I i know how you think i know your arguments against this movie and you know i'm gonna debunk all of them right here right now but before i get into the good no the movie is not 100 percent amazing there are two things that i would like to point out that i don't really like about this movie and one is rose i don't think that rose i'm not gonna say that i don't think that she's a character that should exist but i don't like what her role serves in this film the whole canto bite b plot it just it, it i i don't like it it doesn't need to be in the film she's there to teach finn who used to be a stormtrooper about the effects of war why are we teaching the effects of war to a person who actively participated in war it doesn't make any sense does it no rose doesn't really need to be there. I mean, I feel like it would have been cooler if Finn and Poe went and they looked for whatever. What were they even trying to look for? They're looking for, oh, they're looking for the code breaker so that they could figure out how to get the dreadnought or whatever. The freaking the Star Destroyer. The Star Destroyer was chasing them through hyperspace. That also, uh, I feel like it could have worked. Uh, it, it works. It, it serves its purpose. It's not the best plot device in the world, but I feel like it served its purpose well. But I mean, I feel like it would have been cooler if, imagine if Finn and Poe went to Canto Bite. And at the beginning, Poe was the one who was like all trigger happy. He got his comrades killed, but they exploded the dreadnought. What if Finn is teaching Poe about the effects of war and then it would have hit harder, but it's Rose doesn't need to be in the movie second is luke skywalker i'm a little iffy on it though i i'm not gonna say that i like it but i don't 100 percent dislike it anymore i'm gonna get to luke skywalker later on because i know i don't like what they did with this character but i also love what they did with his character um but i also don't like it a lot but those are my two gripes about the movie it's not it's not perfect but there are a lot of good things about this film. Starting one, the cinematography is amazing. This is the best shot Star Wars movie of all time. And if you think differently, I don't know. Mm, Rogue One's good. I don't know. It's between this and Rogue One. Rogue One is a really well shot built um, film. Greg Frazier, my goat. I always have to mention him. But the, the Last Jedi looks beautiful. You know, like if you if you look at the Last Jedi. And the Rise of Skywalker side by side. The Rise of Skywalker looks like a movie, but The Last Jedi looks like a film. It just has that like filmish look to it. It has that aesthetic and that aura. You know what I'm saying? Everyone in this movie has aura. It just it just feels good when you're watching it. Like the the whole dull maneuver doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make sense at all. But it looks really pretty. I feel like. If you turn off your brain a little bit and you just admire how cool that that scene looks, you can accept it. That's how I accepted it. 
because it doesn't it makes no sense whatsoever if you think of it if you turn on your lore hat and you think about oh how hyperspace works does it really make sense no but that's a pretty looking shot that's one of the most beautiful shots in all of star wars and i talked about this i don't know it was one video but people were trying to say that that one shot where darth vader turns into anakin and then back to darth vader or something is like the best shot in all of star wars no i'd say there are a lot of good ones twin sons objectively is the best but the holdo maneuver beautiful the the fight with the um the praetorian guards ray and kylo versus the praetorian guards beautiful it was a beautiful scene i don't know why i don't know why the holdo maneuver is hated on i do know why it's hated on but just admire it and look at it and look at its its feel and its beauty and it's just it's great accept it for what it is going on the characters the characters are really good i love all of the character arcs in this film a couple of them are a little iffy, and I'm going to get into them. Holdo, I accept it. You know, yes, it feels like it feels like a woke Disney thing, but I mean, it for the most part, it works, and it ends off her her character arc ends off in a really cool way. Why didn't she just tell Poe that her plan from the beginning? I, I mean, it kind of makes sense. It kind of makes sense because i mean at the beginning he did get everyone killed and he was trying to be you know blow stuff up and whatnot so i mean from from a certain point of view it makes sense a little iffy on that one um but like all the rest of the main characters um like poe yeah the the whole b plot is not good the b plot in this movie is not good well no that's more of a c plot the the a plot is ray and her journey and then the b plot is whatever was going on with the rebels the resistance and then the c-plot didn't need to be in the movie but like ray kylo ren luke i love what they did with their characters ray i feel like this is her best film like it goes it's it ugh. her character arc from the force awakens into the last jedi flows so seamlessly I know that in because everyone talks about oh she's a Mary Sue and blah 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 blah. She wasn't. I don't think she was really a Mary Sue esque character until the Rise of Skywalker. Yes, she was good at a lot of things, but it it can be explained. She did beat Kylo Ren, but Kylo Ren had just taken the full blunt force of a bowcaster to his stomach and got up and was fighting with a lightsaber. Like the the, the dude was basically you know bleeding out and fighting. It makes sense that he wouldn't win against Rey in that fight but I love her character arc in this movie and I think that uh, it could have been done so well in the Rise of Skywalker because it's it's set up they have a great setup where she's training with Luke and Luke can like see the darkness inside of her and he's like uh I don't know I don't I don't know about you and then because like I love because Kylo Ren at the beginning of the movie at, even in episode seven you can see that like they're doing a reverse on the character arc he's a villain who's being called to the light usually like you know luke scott not luke scott well luke to an extent yes um also but you know anakin skywalker is the most prevalent character who showcases this he's a light side character being called to the dark and he becomes Darth vader but they had a cool chance to flip the script and we can see in the force awakens kylo ren is being called to the light and then in episode eight we have the really cool scene i really like it you know everybody jokes about it oh snoke snoke didn't know he's gonna die i think snoke knew he was going to die he knew that kylo ren was going to kill him because he wanted kylo ren to surpass him and become the big villain and i think that kylo ren was going to do this because he was like oh i'm gonna do this and like fully become dark side i'm going to let the past die let my light past die and i'm gonna kill it and i'm going to become darkness itself i'm going to become the new supreme leader and then they could have in the rise of skywalker made him be like no <laughs> i'm really a light side and then they could have made ray go to the dark because as i was saying ray when she was training with luke luke saw the darkness inside of her ray could have went from the light to the dark and they could have done a reverse on the whole entire thing but no the writers at disney are incompetent and they didn't think of that but i love the whole all their character arcs i love the force dyad in this movie like i said snoke was really cool and then it all culminates in the great fight scene snoke's death the snoke's death is really good 
because like I was saying, he knew he was going to die. And then they have the really cool fight in the best line, one of my favorite lines of Star, War, um, Star Wars, with Kylo Ren is like, let the past die, kill it if you have to. That's the only way to become what you are meant to be. You can use that in life, really. They're dropping bombs, dropping wisdom on you in The Last Jedi. And then let me talk about Luke. I'm a little iffy because no, my Luke Skywalker would never run away to some deserted island and quit because he almost killed a kid and he would almost he would never almost kill a kid. But then again, I was listening to this podcast and this guy was saying that in episode six, when Darth Vader's like, hey, um, I'm going to turn your sister to the dark side or whatever, Luke gets he gets real angry and goes Super Saiyan for a second and almost kills Darth Vader. So imagine if he had, if he saw a vision of someone killing his sister and his best friend. Yeah, he might go a little feral. Would he pull a lightsaber out on a kid though? I don't know. The, the, the Skywalkers do get a little emotional. So, I mean, you know, his dad did kill younglings. So maybe it runs in the family. I don't know. Do I think Luke Skywalker would ever do that? Debatable. Like I said, he's an emotional guy, but I don't think he'd ever just like run away like that. But I do think that he made some really great points as well, though, because when he was talking to Rey about the Jedi and why it's time for the Jedi to end, he was saying that, oh, at the peak of their um, whatever it is, the peak of their power, they let Darth Sidious take over and start the war and, you know, defeat all the Jedi. And they let one of their own become a Sith. And he's telling the truth because... Darth Vader only exists because of the Jedi. If the Jedi didn't have the rules and no attachments and whatnot, Anakin would have been able to go save his mother two weeks earlier and he would have saved her life if he could have, you know, felt love and had an attachment. He could have told them about Padme and they could have helped her not die. I mean, she wouldn't have died if he didn't turn to the dark side, but he turns to the dark side because Sidious was there in his ear and the Jedi weren't offering any good advice to him because the Jedi sucked. So Luke was right. The Jedi and the way that the Jedi were moving and their ideals and their morals had to end in a new form of Jedi had to arise. I see what they were trying to do there, but it didn't really translate well because why is Luke Skywalker running away like a little baby? It doesn't make any sense. But he makes a couple of good points and his fight scene at the end was beautiful. Now, why did Luke, why did he die? Um I really hated that. Like, okay, he hadn't used the Force in a long time, and he made a Force clone of himself on a whole nother different planet, which would take a lot of energy, but I don't think he had to die. Like, he'd get real tired, but did they really have to kill him off? No. And why didn't he mourn? Why did they delete the scene of him mourning his best friend's death? That makes zero sense. So in a sense, no. This is not my Luke Skywalker, but also in a sense, this is my Luke Skywalker because he makes some good points and he has a really cool fight scene. It's really Luke Skywalker-esque and it looks cool and it's good. The movie looks cool. The characters have some pretty good character arcs. A lot, you know, like I said, Luke Skywalker, Holdo, nah, a, a bit iffy, a bit iffy. They're not totally bad, okay? I don't think that... I used to think that they were 100% bad, but they're not 100% bad. They're not 90% good either. You know, I'm thinking I'm thinking of a 60-40 split. 60 iffy, 40, I don't know. Um, Rose shouldn't exist, but Canto Bite shouldn't exist. The Code Breakers, the whole C plot itself is dumb. I will admit. The whole Captain Phasma... Yeah, rebel scum. That didn't need to be in the movie. The entire C-plot is stupid. They just needed to give Captain Phasma something to do, which didn't really work. But everything with the Resistance and the Force and Luke Skywalker and the Force Dyad and the Praetorian Guard fight and the Holdo Maneuver, that part of the movie is so absolutely incredible. And the movie looks really good. I think that this is one of the most rewatchable Star Wars movies that is out there. So I... I will comfortably give this movie a 9 out of 10. I, I said it. I said it. I'm going to give The Last Jedi a resounding 9 out of 10. I think that it is a really good Star Wars movie. It's very solid. Like I said, very rewatchable. 
it looks it just it looks good like you 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 can't hate a movie that looks this good like the amazing spider-man 2 is it a good movie no but it looks pretty so it's enjoyable i feel like this movie is very enjoyable because it looks good and there's a lot of action and it's funny but the c plot if the c plot wasn't in the movie it might even be a 10 tweak some things with luke and holdo it could be a 10 out of 10 but yeah everyone hated it and the rise of skywalker tried to reverse everything that this movie did which made it even worse in hindsight but then it made the rise of skywalker the worst star wars movie ever created i it's disney please please hire better writers hire writers who actually like star wars and not dave filoni because he's just going to try to bring back darth vader and ahsoka from the dead thank you for watching this video if you are still here um thank you the video is pretty much over now don't forget to drop a like and subscribe and turn on post notifications and follow me on letterboxd and i'm making a discord server it should be done soon i'm gonna update this video with i'm gonna put it in the, the bio the description of the video when it's done in every future video if, if you're interested in joining the discord join it we're gonna talk about movies we're gonna talk about star wars in there it's just just a safe space to talk about stuff you know just vibe with people who like movies and star wars and i really i really love destiny 2 so if you like destiny 2 join the discord it's gonna be fun and uh yeah thanks for watching the video hope you have a great day peace out subscribe to king b Oh, I didn't know we had outro music now. Subscribe to King Beam. Join the Beam team. <laughs>